What up? We are back with another edition of DNVR Rams Live from the Toyota Lounge. I'm Justin Michael, a.k.a. J. Mike. We've got Andre Simone here. We've got a lot to talk about. I was up in Fort Collins the other day for CSU football practice. They're about to have their second uh, scrimmage this weekend. And then obviously the spring game coming up on the 20th. So a lot happening. We're going to talk about kind of some of the keys from my conversation with Braden Fowler Nicolosi. If you missed the article, go check that out on the DNVR.com. Just talking about some of the things he's locking in on. We're going to preview the running back room. And then in the third segment, we're going to have a little bit of fun and we are going to do another draft like we did last week, but we're going to do the best sporting events to attend in person. So your bucket list sporting Whoa. events to attend. I'll be interested to see kind of where you take that. Yeah. First things first, man. How's it going? We just wrapped up the draft pod. So I feel like my brain is mush right now trying to go from like NFL draft preview to college basketball recruiting to spring football to the Nuggets and Avs. It's a lot going on. Yep. It's a quick intellectually speaking turnaround. It's a crazy time of year. Got so much going on. And you hit a teensy weensy bit of a lull. Before things get crazy once again. So how are you doing more than anything? How's your off season for once? It's good. I mean, like we'll get to the real quiet part here in a couple of weeks. Once spring ball comes to a close, then I mean, the nice thing, honestly, about college sports in 2024, although it's, it's kind of a chaotic process trying to keep up with all these moves, it's become so much closer to pro sports with the the player movement and the coach movement yep. it's like it, there's yeah. always content so be talking a ton of csu football recruiting in may and june that's when they have their visits and then before you know it fall camps here again in august and the whole thing starts over it's really true there's never uh there's never an end to it how are things down in Fort Col- or up in fort collins these days it's good i mean it's it's an interesting spring for CSU football, I will say I I tried to make it pretty clear that this is one of those springs where there's not a ton of unknown. Like you have an established quarterback. The majority of your starters are in peace. It's really kind of like on the practice field, at least right. The AD's office might be a different deal. Yes, yes, yes. (laughs) You know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see just kind of like who these young guys stand out. If it's going to translate in, in camp and all that, I'm always interested to see, uh, but the the big focus for CSU this spring has just been locking in mentally. I think they, they know that with this many mm. returning pieces, there's a lot to be excited about. There's a lot to build off of in yeah. terms of the offensive improvement. You go from basically not even having a competent offense in 2022, barely even, you know, there were times where it was like, all right, we might as well just send the punter out to being one of the more explosive units in 2023 and I mean, you could go back before 22 to like 2021, 2020, the parts of 2019 once was, Hill went well, down. I mean, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's been a rough stretch for quite some time. They took it a massive deep. step in the right direction. And just in terms of yep. the explosive plays, getting that passing offense going, red zone offense, scoring in general, all of that was improved. That said... It, it was just such a roller coaster experience and it felt like we would take two steps forward and then one step back and then two steps back and three yeah. steps forward. Like you couldn't ever find that consistency when the passing offense was rolling, the rushing offense was struggling when the rushing offense was going, the passing offense was struggling. Yeah. If it was a defensive game, the offense wasn't going. I mean, right. they, they've just got to find a little bit of consistency and get off of this roller coaster but one of the big keys, and we're mostly going to be talking offense today uh, for CSU, is is being better in those key situations, whether it's, you know, the two-minute drill. That I mean, you look at what happened in Boulder, Hawaii, UNLV. There were a lot of situations where they're in games late, and just a general lack of execution caused this team to, quite frankly, you know, fail short of, of what they should have achieved last year. They wouldn't have been a championship team, but they should have been a bowl team. I think that's fair to say. They're really trying to, that's the focus, like, especially in the scrimmage this past weekend, like they're working on situational stuff. They're working on two minute drills. They're just, which is huge. And it's huge for a young quarterback that 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 you got to remember he had never gotten consistent reps with the ones. I mean, a little bit in fall camp in August before he take took over for Millen, 
but I mean, this is his third spring on campus, but really, I mean, it was Clay Millen's job. You're, you're working with the twos and threes. It's a completely different situation when you're getting those consistent reps with the ones every single day. And I think this is a really important spring for a, you know, a young quarterback like BFN who clearly has talent, but he's, he's got to lock it in a little bit and kind of just eliminate some of the erratic decisions, the little mistakes that, that just plagued him, you know? hundred percent. And I think he really needs to come into his own as, you know, Jay Norvell's the embodiment of Jay Norvell's offense on the field, keeping that on time. I think that's what was really missing from that air raid is the consistency, really the consistency on a down in down out basis to keep the offense on time, to keep that tempo fast just as coach norvell would like right and it, and on and just staying on the field yeah, like i mean they, yeah. the, the problem Sustaining was drives is yes. massive in this yeah 100 percent. well that's going to be big for your offensive success it's going to hopefully alleviate some of the turnover issues like as as explosive as exciting as bfn was i think his personality that charismatic energy was, was something the team really bought into it gave the team some swagger, some attitude. You saw that in some games, even on the road where they ended up coming up short. I just kind of felt like he had some chippiness to him in that MTSU win in, in Boulder and in UNLV that, you know, it just kind of been lacking some juice yeah. that you need from that position. That said, so much of the, the position is, is honestly just learning to, to live to fight another day and, and taking mm-hmm. what the defense is giving you. Mm-hmm. And that's the other big focus for BFN. That's what I wrote about. So if you missed that, please go check it out. The DNVR.com. Yeah. Great shout out from the Oso Blanco on the Toyota chat there saying great recent piece on there and, uh, you know, giving you your flowers. So that's great to see. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate all you guys in the Toyota chat locked in keeping up with all of our CSU content. I've got a ton of fun stuff coming up, by the way, this weekend. We're going to get into football. i uh, got some visits coming up on the transfer portal. Uh, Hoops has got some big stuff. Huge visit this weekend. Kerry Booth, son of Nuggets, GM Calvin Booth. CSU's in play. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Awesome. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Just a little tease for you. But I'm um, sorry, getting back on track with, with BFN. He had, There's so much to like about what he did last year, especially for a young gun stepping into the spotlight under really tough circumstances, not being the projected starter. He also tried to be Superman far too often. And we've seen that even like in the NFL guys like Josh Allen, you can have all the physical arm talent in the world. If you're constantly putting the team in a negative spot, cause you're turning it over or because you're not taking the 12 yards that's open in front of you. Cause you're trying to go 50 down the field it just, it sets you back. It gets your offense out of rhythm. It it puts your defense in a tough spot, time of possession wise. And I think that was kind of a factor with the defense underperforming at least a little bit. Um, In general, the defense just needs to be better regardless. Uh, But there are just so many things they could do in terms of finding stability that I think would really like increase the margin or decrease the margins, I guess. Like, you know, they they need a chance here to just stop shooting themselves in the foot. (laughs) Yeah, you need some consistency. I think what we talked about with BFN is he really stood out in that intermediate passing game, the the tough, more timing, accuracy, being able to stand tough in the pocket and get that done. And, I mean, that's exactly what you need to keep the offense on time, right? Keep it in rhythm. It was more the easy stuff and the short stuff or maybe be more consistent in the deep stuff, which is where you're going to be your most inconsistent, just naturally. Just naturally. I mean, yeah. nobody's going to be like 80% on the yeah, deep mo- balls. Most people are going to shoot 80% on layups and 35% on threes. That makes sense. That checks out. That's high probability, low probability. But then, I mean, how much of that was these situations where CSU couldn't rely on their run game much, would kind of be playing from behind, and it's a tough spot, especially for a young quarterback, that like that rhythm, balance you know? of, yeah. and, and I think he's going to have to kind of, I don't know. I just think there are times that like he, he just tried to do too much. And I think that there are, there are, there are reasons that he did that. Like you're saying the the lack of run game, just inconsistent offense, but 
you got to remember, like you've got Tory Horton coming back. You've got yeah. Justice Ross Simmons. You feel pretty good about Donovan Ollie coming in. He's a guy that BFN mentioned has really stood out this spring. Yeah, had a veteran. He's been at multiple P5 schools. can come in immediately. Just the way he carries himself in practice and stuff. I'm hoping that with more reps with the ones, by getting this entire spring, by getting all of fall camp, he's just going to go much more settled into the season than he was a year ago. And, and you know, maybe if you're able to get that run game going, it, it just it takes some of the pressure off. Because I feel like some of the success he had in the early games had to do with the unknown. Like, you know, defense, just, especially that CU game, like we just threw crossers at him all night and they never really adjusted. Yeah. Once defense is kind of adjusted, started throwing a little bit more zone and stuff at him, it, it, it caused him some issues, which which makes sense. But again, if you can just keep things simple, keep the offense moving, hitting those quick screens to Tory, taking the run game when it's there, like this is an offense that's really designed to do a lot of the hard work for you, but you've got to do the little things right in order for it to function. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, it's in that early stretch that we see more of the multi-turnover games Then he's kind of able to clean it up, play a little more meat and potatoes. But I almost worried he got a tad too conservative towards the end there. So I think it's fine that balance, too. The other thing is, Braden's a hell of an athlete. He's got good size. He moves, right? He moves well. Maybe he's not. I wouldn't say he's a dual threat, but he's a guy that offers you some mobility. And I I do feel like some of his bigger struggles came where he's trying to throw it on the move where he's trying to improvise and do things. I just think that's, you know, when the lights are on, it takes a second to adjust to like, Oh, what do I, the off script, what, what's going on in our, uh, well, and when is it appropriate to go for yeah. it? And when is, yeah. when is it to just, Hey, let's throw this one away. Let's live to fight another day here. Right. And finding your moments of like, Oh, this is a time where I bail out and try to make a play above the X's and O's. This is where, no, the X's and O's dictate, as you just said, throw it away live to see another day. No problem. I'm glad you brought that up because I, I agree with you. I think they had that three game stretch to close the season where they get the run game going. You beat San Diego state, which, which was huge. Justin Marshall emerges. You're feeling pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Um, and then obviously you lose to Hawaii and, and don't end up making the, the bowl game, but those were coming off of that, that really rough loss in Wyoming in which he had a couple of bad turnovers. And I do think he got a little bit gun shy at moments Yeah, and that, and that's tough because like, I, I, I want, I want him to rein it in. I want him to have a, a feeling of the moment, but I don't want him to be timid or not willing to make some of those special throws that separate him yep. from some of these, like his arm talent is is on another level. Like he can make throws that most quarterbacks cannot at this level needs to clean some things up with his footwork, which is something I've been banging now for 18 months, but. And that's an air raid quarterback thing. It's man. just, like, it's, it's going to like, honestly, I think what they're practicing is getting it out early. I, I yeah. don't know that they care how much, what your, your bottom half looks like. It's like, get it out, get, rid get of it. it out, get it out. Um, I mean, what's crazy, J. Mike, is his accuracy numbers. Once Mount West play started, you know, he's 65, 72, 69, 81 percent out of conference. Then it's 45, 59, 65, 62, 57, 56, 50 percent. And not till the Hawaii game is he back up to 68. So his first four career starts, he's over 65 percent every single game. He doesn't replicate that until the final game against Hawaii. So that's where he he almost looked like a really good pro pro quarterback, right? Like yeah, yeah. Again, the kind of guy you'd expect to see in the Craig Bull offense, and less so what you're expecting out of a Coach Norvell, Fort Fun Air Raid type deal, right? So he needs to he needs to find his identity a little more there, find his Luke Falkness because. Once he, once he can be accurate and he's carving him up with those slants and the shorter stuff in the pocket, his accuracy, his ability to layer throws, plenty of arm strength. He's got the size. He's got some athleticism. He checks off a ton of boxes uh, I mean, to quickly be the top guy in this conference. He, he gets you know? to drop back and 
and make, I mean, we saw it in the Boise State game. Obviously, everybody's going to think about the Hail Mary. The throw he had to set up the Hail Mary was the best throw of the entire season. I mean, just dropped it in a bucket to yep. Tories right yep. in between two DBs. He had a couple throws in the middle Tennessee State game that are very similar to what you're talking. I mean, he's no got all the, all the talent it in the world. The numbers. Yep. They just got to find a little bit more consistency. Uh, one of the things that's going to be huge for them, and this is one of the things that Braden talked about, Leaning on the run game, they ran a ton in the scrimmage over the weekend. I expect to see a, a lot of it over the, the next two weeks as well as in the spring game on the 20th as well, and it, it makes a lot of sense. You've got a really deep running back room. We're going to talk about that here in just a second. Real quick, guys, your Front Range Toyota stores are so stoked to partner with DNVR, and we're stoked to partner with them. They are the official vehicle of DNVR. Trucks have always been a part of Toyota's DNA. For generations, Toyota has built durable legends destined for greatness and perfect for Colorado. Whether you're con conquering off-road trails or hauling the weight of the world, there's a Toyota truck that's just right for you. Check out the 2024 Tacoma and the return of the iconic 2024 Land Cruiser, which comes this spring. Toyota offers 17 models with all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive capability like the Epic 4Runner. They also offer more and... Uh, low and zero emission vehicles combined than any other automaker to give customers numerous choices to reduce their carbon footprint. You got to love that. They have 16 different hybrid vehicles to choose from, like the Tundra iForce Max hybrid truck. Not to be outdone, Toyota SUVs take command on the road and on the trail, so you can explore the road less traveled without sacrificing smooth city rides and SUVs like the RAV4 or the Grand Highlander. Toyota is a proud partner of CSU Athletics and the official vehicle of DNVR. I also want to shout out the homies at game time. I actually witnessed some people in the wild taking advantage of the awesomeness that is game time. The closer you get to first pitch, the cheaper the, the tickets actually get with game yep. time. So That's right. game time has never made it easier to buy tickets at the last minute. They take all the inconvenience out of it. And what's cool is they are now an authorized ticket marketplace for major league baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and the lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. Um, you can get CSU tickets on there. They've got stand up comedy, concerts, you name it. If you're looking for tickets, Game Time is the place to go. Download the Game Time app, create an account, make sure you use that code DNVR for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account, redeem that code DNVR for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. Nicely done. Appreciate everybody in the Toyota chat. Shout out to all you Ram fans out there. Shout out to the non Ram fans in the chat as well. Uh, appreciate you guys tuning in. One of the, the things that's going to be interesting to me about this offense is, you know, when you think air raid, you're thinking 4,500 plus yards, 40 touchdown passes, you know, exactly. four or five wide receivers with, you know, six, 700 yards, uh, just chucking the ball down the field. What's interesting is if you look at some of the better offenses under Jay Norvell, uh, both in his days as an OC and going back to his head coaching time at Nevada, his best offenses have certainly had a strong rushing component, especially when you look at like Oklahoma and Texas, yeah. which makes sense. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, even at Nevada and they, they found that they were able to kind of find some downhill success by running some pistol concepts, which obviously mm -hmm. that had always been Nevada's offense. That's a whole separate thing. But I think for this Rams team, which has a young quarterback, which has some veteran talent at, at receiver, you should be able to move the ball that way. What I want to see is, can you consistently run the ball the way that you did over those last couple of weeks and take advantage of the talent that you've had? That, that's that been the focus all spring. I think part of that also is Torrey Horton has not practiced a ton this spring. He's been sick with the flu for like over a week. And even, even before that, they're going to limit him because they're not going to try and hurt him. Justice Ross Simmons had shoulder surgery in the off season. So he's not active this spring. It's big. You know, I think and there's an element of why they're going to run the ball a little mm -hmm. bit more this spring. And that has to do with who's available, but how many returning starters on the Oland? Three. three. So you got both That's tackles and your center, um, which you feel pretty Solid. good about course new starting guards are going to be huge for the run game and that's where it gets interesting and yeah. i will say 
I, I, there could be a situation where you maybe move a guy like Drew Moss, who is your starting right tackle. Maybe you move him inside if one of your younger guys is able to pop at tackle. Maybe you keep Moss at right tackle just because he's been a proven commodity there, and, and you try and get one of these guys that's going to be at tackle in the future and get him some playing time at guard this year as like a redshirt sophomore, a guy like Aaron Karras, uh, potentially, or a Tanner Morley, both Colorado kids, actually, which you love to see at CSU. Big time. Um, but the depth of this running back room is pretty legit, man. You got Kobe Johnson back, the North Dakota State transfer. We didn't see a ton of him because yeah. he got hurt early last year, but he he the did return the kick. expectations kicks. coming into the year. Yeah, I mean, he's he's an electric back. He's got great mm-hmm. speed. He's got nice hands. I think you can get him involved a little bit as yeah. a, a scat back and kind of yep. get some swing passes. He, he's even been doing some... He even did some stuff in practice the other day where he's, like, working on out routes to the sideline and stuff. Like, I, I think there's Don't some... Don't get yourself in trouble. We're all right here. <laughs> We're all right. They, <laughs> We're they know just us. friends. Just friends. Yeah, it's all, it's all good. <laughs> um, I, I'm excited about him. You've got Avery Morrow back, although... He's a guy I think you can tell as the injuries have added up over the years. He's kind of lost a little bit of that explosiveness we saw early on in his CSU career. That said, there's something to be said about a big bodied back who you just trust. Like, you know, it's it's fourth and one. We need a guy we know who's going to hold on to the football, who's going to run hard. Like, that's a guy that you could trust for some key carries. Yeah, reliable is what I'd say. Reliable. That's And even like Van Shield, while he's probably running back four or five on the depth chart, shit, man. I mean, he averaged about four yards a carry for most of the season last year. He proved to be reliant in, in pass pro. Not the best hands in the world, but you, you could throw him a, a swing pass mm-hmm. or two. And then shoot, I mean, Justin Marshall, he comes on at the end of the season looking like Marshall Falk. Like, he's your running back one for sure. I probably should have just started with him. That would have been yeah. a little bit more logical to do it. But his combination of lateral agility, vision, and then burst, that ability to make one quick cut and then go. I have not seen a CSU running back like this in a long time. I am very pre bibs. Yeah, Capri is D? probably. Uh, he's like a he's like a con. He's he's got some of that shiftiness that Capri did that yeah. where it looks so smooth in the open field. I think he's got better burst though. I think he's faster. I do too. And how's he stack up size wise? Like how big is Jam? Because I I agree completely. Is that prototypical one cut back? Really nice balance and quickness on those one cuts. And then the second he's made a decision, you feel that burst, but it all starts with that vision, really, right? All these tools are kind of useless if you're not seeing it. And Justin Marshall burst onto the scene. That speed of the game didn't feel like too much. He was seeing lanes, he was hitting him, and he was breaking off big gains. And he didn't have the luxury to, like, ease himself in in the non-conference or whatever, you know, like... He's doing it right off the bat in the important months when running the ball in November and December is actually what you got to do. Really, it's November in college football. Shoot, I mean, if he would have played one more game, he would have led the Rams in rushing for this season Yeah, in, in a four-game sample size. like mm-hmm. Immediately comes in, gets back-to-back 100-yard performances, almost had a third straight if he doesn't get dinged up in that Hawaii game. He's really intriguing. Listed at... Uh, 5'11", 175, Capri Bibbs was like 5'10", Small. 200, maybe a little bit thicker, a little yeah, bit shorter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but he's going to put on muscle. I mean, you got to remember, he's a true sophomore. True sophomore is big, man. True sophomore is big. And yeah, how much weight can you add? And how many touches can you afford to give him every single game is going to be the big thing for him. Well, that, that that's what I'm really interested to see. Like, is he your quote unquote bell cow. No, you're not probably going to run the ball with anybody like 30 times a game outside of a really a situation, you know, maybe the game just plays out that way, right? But it's not going to be your game plan. Most days, all these guys have really, I mean, have proven themselves and we haven't even talked about Damian Henderson was their highest rated signing for the the recruiting class last year. He got hurt a little bit last year. I I think he's going to get some touches as well. Although I, I expect, Basically, I think it'll be like this. I think Marshall is going to be your your lead back. I think he gets the majority of your carries, more than half of them, probably like 60% of your total carries yeah. at least. Yeah. 
Next, I think it's Kobe Johnson. I think he's yep. going to be the guy. He's mostly. third down back maybe to start the season. Third down back. He's a veteran. You Flex know. him out wide, that kind of shit. It's really the versatility. Fits the air raid. It's, yeah, it's, it's hard. If you have him back there, it's not just guaranteed, hey, we're going to handle like, You know, yeah. where if it's like Van yeah. Shields, all right, well, we'll probably run it up the middle. Right, right, you know, right. it got a little predictable last year. That's, that yeah. was why the fans were getting frustrated. Some of it was circumstance. But those will be your two guys. After that, I think it's probably going to be like a mix uh, of Damian Henderson and Avery Morrow. I do think Morrow is just, he's the coach's guy. They love him. He's been with them for years. I don't see a situation where they just throw him to the side. That said, I don't think he's going to be the featured back in the way that he was, yeah. you know, in, in yeah. recent years. And he, he shouldn't be. You, you have more talent. Pre the Norvell. No, he came over from okay. Nevada okay. with Norvell. Um, had the best game of his career in Reno in that win against Nevada in 2022, really emotional. He's had some fun moments, yeah. um, got in trouble, uh, legally this past off season. So that's the whole thing. We'll see kind of what happens there. Um, but yeah, it's more him and Henderson playing things out for that third back spot. And then there's old reliable Van shield there. Like the fans aren't going to like it, but there was a reason he was getting touches. Frankly, there was a reason that when he was getting touches, more often than not, it was positive plays that were being uh, broken off. Vans earned his spot on this team. Yeah. Like he, there's clearly, there's times when Van is in the open field, he's going to get caught from behind where Justin Marshall wouldn't. He's also going to drop the shoulder and run through guys when mm -hmm. other guys are going to go down. And I just love a guy that's willing to work that hard. I mean, it was a fun story. Last year, you have no healthy scholarship running backs for the entire spring. Van Shield steps up, and usually that's just like a cute little, oh, that was a fun spring ball story. Thanks for being a great teammate. Yeah, but right. now the real backs are here. That was, that was neat and all. But Van put himself in a position, and yes, he benefited from injuries. It helped him. He took advantage of every opportunity that he had. And like to me, he is what... I'm getting co real corny here, but like, like he's kind of like what college football is all about. You know, the Colorado kid earns his role on the team. He's not going to be the star. Shit. It wouldn't shock me if Van had a two touchdown game where he came up huge in a win either. You know, like he's just, he's one of that guys. People love those stories too. Oh, it's like, you can rally behind a guy like that. Love, yeah. Yes. We're, we're all about it. Yeah, I mean, it's 100%. especially like in the mountain West blue collar, you know, like, we're about that stuff. Um, but the main the main point of this whole thing here is they have options. They've got versatility. They've got five backs who have had at least a, a couple of carries, most of them substantial carries on a D1 field. You feel good if any combination out of these two or three are, are playing and, and producing for you. And that's just not a position that CSU has been in for a long time. And, and I know like your identity, I know it's easy to focus on, on the passing, but I think you'd be foolish to not use this when you have such a plethora of talent here. I mean, what can you say? You got to make the most of it. I think it's going to have to be a huge part of this season and this offense. I think the O-line's a, you know, sneaky big part. The other thing is, you know, with the quarterbacks, we're talking a lot about the offensive identity how can you lean into this air raid offense, keep things on time, keep things on schedule, really have that tempo feel. And then the running game is more about... Can you close it out, man? Can you close it out? And identity or not identity, what happens when you got to go to the Springs and play Air Force? What happens when you, you have to drive up north and, you know, lace them up for the, the bronze boot? When those matchups come into play, even San Diego State, Boise, you know, Boise, God damn, they just ran all over them last year with Genty. The best know? teams in the Mountain West year in and year out all run the football. Even even if even you if you can't get away all, with not doing you, you it, you can't. You just it's can't. too physical of a league. Yeah, you're not going to win like you're Hawaii. No, in this league, you're not. So I, I think that's the other part of this is like there's an identity and how you want to look and feel. And then this is more kind of what's going to ground you. What's your anchor kind of like when push comes to shove, can we get those two yards on third and two to extend the drive? And, well, and when know. it's third and goal from the one and a half yard line, like yeah. 
are you so desperate? Like, do you have to run a, are you trying to run a quick screen to Tory Horton? What those, you know, so much of what works with the air raids from that underneath stuff, you need space. And when the field gets tighter and we saw that with the red zone struggles and in, in Norvell's first year between the twenties, they moved the ball pretty well. Mm. And then they would get, you know, in the red zone and they just, they could not get any push. Now, a lot of that had to do with the offensive line. You're hoping that the O-line feels closer to last year than the year before, and it should. I or mean, even better. Or even better. You know what sounds really good right now, though? A Breck brew. An ice-cold Breck brew yeah, at great. the farmhouse. Join us at the Breckenridge Farmhouse for our live Broncos draft show on April 25th. Super Bowl 50 champion Todd Davis is going to be there. Hank's going to be there. RK will be there. They're breaking down the NFL draft. A burger and house beer are included in your ticket price before and after the show. You'll be able to have a meet and greet and take pics with the DNVR crew. Uh, we'll be providing some fun giveaways, swag, pint glasses. Uh, Raisin Cane's reps will be in-house to hand out some great swag, footballs as well. It's going to be a blast. Make sure you check that out. You know we love our Breck beers at DNVR. They've been doing it for over 30 years. It comes down to their love and passion for making good beer. I just picked up a, a case of Fun Slinger the other day. I uh, got some Avalanche Amber Ale for the pops. You can never go wrong with a classic. Check out that Breck beer locator at breckbrew.com to find a brew near you. Now is also a great time to become a DNVR diehard. You get a yes, free sir. hat or shirt of your choice from the locker every year at Renewal. Access to all the diehard level content. 20% uh, off events, 20% off merch. I had, a, I had a buddy, Aaron, hit me up. Aaron Harris, friend of the pod, classic CSU Shout supporter. Out. He he's a DNVR diehard. He hit me up and was like, "Hey, uh, after opening day, like I get a, I get a discount at the bar, right?" And I was like, "Yeah, man, fifteen percent off your entire bill." Him and all the homies came over. I'm sure they had a great time. Fantastic. You can too. Now is a great time to become a diehard. We love you guys. You make all our dreams come true. That that was the the main takeaway from today's podcast is. We're just trying to clean things up for CSU. Like the potential is there. You see it. It flashed. It was in spurts. Can you be a four quarter football team? And so much of that is going to come down to limiting the turnovers. It's going to be establishing the run game and being able to control time of possession and sustaining drives and finishing drives and scoring yeah. points. I don't think it would take that much for this team to make a pretty substantial jump. I'm not talking like 11 and one or something crazy like that, but I'm talking seven wins, eight wins. Like it, it should all be on the table for this team this year, especially with the schedule, seven home games, both your rivals are at home. Can you do the little things though? You had some very close losses last year. And I always talk about when I preview a season, I really like the teams with backfields. I trust returning backfields that I like. And this has the makings of being that kind of team, but both Justin and BFN, they're a little bit on the right. We've seen it. We've seen what it can look like on their best days at this level. Can they now hit that next gear where the, like their blessed flashes become kind of what you expect the from them every Saturday, day in, day out, week in, week out. And then you're going to have something to really work with here. I can't wait, man. I'm excited to see what happens on the spring game. Uh, if you're going to be up in Fort Collins and you want to say hi to your boy, hit me up on Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it. I will certainly be there. It's going to be a blast. And then, you know, like I said, before we know it, fall camp is going to be here. Before we get out of here, I thought we'd have just a little bit of fun. We did a draft last week with just the best days on the sporting calendar, the days you sit around and, oh, man, it's the, the first four days of the NCAA tournament. Can't wait to just be locked in on the couch. We're going to keep that on the keep that same thought process to an extent, but we're going to make it in person. The, the, the sporting events you're dying to go at before you die. The bucket list sporting events. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll see what happens here. Dre, you're my guest. You go first. No, you start this one. Oh, I, I guess you did go first last time. Yeah. Huh? And right. this one, I, wa I want to more see, like, where, where do you set the tone? Okay. Honestly, what I want to figure out is how international do we go here? It's a good question. Like, if you start off and you're like, bronze boot, baby, best rivalry, and no. then I'll be like, okay, okay, I'm, okay. I'm, yeah. I'll get this, the scene set. Okay. If you All go right. like right. Monte Carlo Grand Prix, then I'll be like, okay, I see you. 
All right. Well, let's let's just start with the uh, the <laughs> yeah, World Cup final. Got? Wow, I love that. Okay, that's cool. I think I just think the the concept of the entire globe being locked into one event and being able to to be a part of that in person would yeah, that's pretty would sweet. be pretty epic. So that's, that's what we're going sweet. with. Number one pick, World Cup final. Wow, that's a good one. I like that a lot. Also, um, it seemed like a type of thing you might have on your list at some point. Yeah, and I'm going to learn yeah, from my mistakes from last week. Yep. That's a good call right there. Um, you know, it's it's Masters season. I've just heard incredible things. You son of a bitch. If you take <laughs> Masters Sunday after <laughs> shitting on me for taking the Masters last time, I swear... I'll just cancel the draft. It's over. You killed the exercise. Give me the best. <laughs> I just hear such amazing things, Jay Mike. I'm not a golf guy at all. No, Master Sunday is the upper echelon. And it was actually going to be my, my number one pick, but I was trying to get too cute, and I thought I could get it. I think it's a top three pick in this draft, and uh, yeah, give it to me. All right, go again. I guess I'll go Super Bowl. See, this is where I struggled is because I think there are a lot of events that would be, especially if your team was playing in it. Yeah, like last year's Super Bowl, would, I, I kind of like, would have hated so to be corporate, at if I'm honest. You know, like as a fan, is it really like I've been to an AFC championship and it was one of the most incredible things I've ever been to. That's where I'm going to go next. AFC championship Shit, in your home one. stadium. That's a good one. The Broncos taking down uh, the Patriots to you know go to the Super Bowl. It was just I I've never felt so much energy in that stadium. Um, so that's what I'm going with. And then with my next pick here, it, much like the Super Bowl, I'm a little bit hesitant to go with it because I, I think it is kind of a, a corporate experience. But I'm going to go with a college football national championship. Um, I just think it'd be sweet to cool. experience it. That's cool. So, so I guess CFB, I, yeah. if I say like Natty played at the Rose Bowl, I can't do that anymore. That's you can do CFB semis. You could make an argument that a semi like in the Rose Bowl would be a better experience than a national championship at like the Cowboys stadium. Yeah, I just I feel like that's not necessarily in the spirit of the exercise repeating like that. Give me U.S. Open tennis. That's a sneaky good pick. You could have got that with your last pick because I would not have right, thought tennis. Right. But the U.S. Crowd Open especially has got like a vibe to it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like there'd be celebrities exactly. there. Yeah. Like it would, it would feel unique. Not stuffy. Super. And then I am going to take... Oh, uh, man, this is tough. <laughs> Comments say, be realistic, Justin. Broncos home AFC championship? Sigh. It's like he's been to one not too long ago. You know? It feels like a Come long time guys. ago, man. It'll get back. Give me the Kentucky Derby. Screw it. <sighs> Never been. I think it'd be epic. That was my, I had that on my, like, Hail Mary picks because I, I don't. I'm not like a horse racing guy, but to experience yeah. it in person, I think would have to be pretty sweet. We are hat guys. We are hat guys. And I like where I like dressing up. So also like if you had a wager live at the Derby, like think those 90 seconds yell. That's a good point. Willing just like slapping your legs with whatever paper you've got, like willing this horse to make it through. That sounds amazing, man. Oh man, you're making me think of some interesting ones now. Now I'm like, I mean, I know, and honestly, I, I'm, I'm trying to go more mainstream and not get too same because in I'm the like, weeds. if we're yeah. like, yeah, it'd be sweet to go to the Le Mans, the 24 hour race in France. Oh my God, like, could right, you imagine? Right. Like, but that's yeah. not gonna earn me any points with the the audience right, here. I right. learned my lesson on that last time too. Oh uh, yeah, don't get owned so, by the by the, t the Twitter poll. I have been to. I went to a Nuggets finals game. That was pretty cool. I've never been to a I Stanley know, Cup, so I I'm going to go Stanley Cup finals because the, the intensity okay. of hockey. At your home arena. 
at your home arena would would be incredible. Um, I'm going to go a little obscure for this last one. Some people are going to say this doesn't count. I think it does, especially with where it's at in today's conversation. I'm going WrestleMania. I think WrestleMania is a sporting event. I know it's not like a true sport, but man, it is a spectacle. You see some of the things that these guys do. I have been to to wrestling in person. I went to Raw when I was a kid, and it's one of the top five things I've ever been to in my life. I don't care what anybody says. I am a dork. I understand it, but it is incredible. Especially the atmosphere live. was that crazy, huh? Raw, and that was only Monday Night Raw. So, like, I can't imagine what it would be like to be like at WrestleMania when like The Rock comes out or John Cena see somebody do a, a you know a choke slam off a cage. Like, I, I don't know. Like. That's I'd rather thing, go to like, WrestleMania than a UFC fight. I don't want to see somebody's face get like bashed in, you know, like I know a huge heavyweight fight at like a big arena, like at an I MSG. did consider that like an MSG boxing bout would be pretty freaking cool. That would be really dope. But you know what? This one, I, I, I went mainstream on my first four picks. This one, I'll go a little more personal. Grew up in Milan, Italy, AC Milan fan. When I left to come to the States in 05 after I graduated college, they were the team with the most titles. That competition means a lot. And my buddy had a ticket for me to go to a Champions League final with our team in it. We ended up winning at penalties. Wow. It's too crazy of a turnaround. I didn't want to put that burden on my parents. It's it's probably my life's greatest regrets. So I'm going to write that wrong and say a UCL final UEFA Champions League final is uh getting out with the last pick huge. of the draft is really good value. And I could argue the atmosphere. It's not going to maybe be as, as lit as a world cup. The on field product might be even better. Do we have any big misses in the comment section? Michigan, Ohio State. Yeah, I see where I struggled we with like the specific yeah. like matchups. Then yeah. you're really getting in the weeds. I was just trying to keep it a little bit simple. Uh, the Olympics, I guess, not making it, considering we had the global is probably a little bit of a surprise. But you'd have to pick an event, and the events can be very location specific well and where are the olympics like, like where am i exactly. going am i going like, to greece or am i going to if the winter olympics is in oslo some of the bigger like uh i don't know you know hockey or maybe figure skating some of the Might bigger events, the some other places right aren't going to be as big and vice versa so even if you went winter or summer and it's a specific competition it might not be as lit as it would be other years now, 100 meter dash would be pretty cool to watch no matter what. It's so quick. 10 seconds? Yeah, it's fast. I don't think that's worth a top five pick. I think Final Four was probably on Were there. Were you but too close to it? You were basically just there, you know? Well, and the thing about the Final Four, and it's, I think it's the same Super Bowl argument. If it was your team, that is one yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. But watching a ba- college basketball game right. in a football stadium if you're like at the top of the arena Especially i don't think it's that great of an experience like, like it's actually probably better to just watch it at home yeah yeah i don't think it stacks up i don't either i think that's, i think i play list. the playoffs i think we we did make a really nice list there yep this was good if you have uh, an idea in terms of fun off-season content something you want us to draft send it our way we'll do some quirky stuff yeah throughout i love the, it the summer, but obviously I'm going to have tons of spring ball content the next couple of weeks. I've been doing a podcast tomorrow on uh, the latest hoops recruiting news. So I'm going to get you all up to date with the guys that are going to be on campus over the next couple of weeks. Rams are in on some really intriguing high major talent. Um, Fun, man. I, we'll see. I don't want to get my, I don't want to get everybody's hopes up, but I, I, they have a chance here to land some serious dudes. Got a nice little uh, chunk of NIL money. Shout out to all you CSU fans. You're really moving the needle there. That's huge. It's huge. I mean, we we cannot survive as programs without it. This was awesome. Shout out to all you in the Toyota chat. This was a blast. We'll be back with more live shows next week, more podcasts, more written content. Subscribe, thednvr.com. Much love, Dre. Much love, Alyssa, behind the sticks. And much love to all you. Always proud to be. Peace. Silly like the mayor.